I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hello there, Marissa. Hey, how's it going? It's going. Yeah, you're starting to feel better. I, I am starting to feel better. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as we were chatting before we hit record, I'm on my second antibiotic now. So mm-hmm. maybe this one will will push it over the edge. How's that? But I, I hope so for your sake. But, you know, you do I, sound better. So thank you. Thank you. You know, I had a coaching client in today. And so I meet my clients typically once a month. Mm-hmm. And he said, you still? <laughs> so, so that means that a month ago, I was under the weather. Wow. So I've, I, I've been consistent, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Just, you know, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I stopped taking my airborne gummies. I'm not sure. No, I really didn't. I say, I, did, did just, you? How could you? <laughs> I didn't stop. Something just hit me. Mm. I think, well, we had, we had, if you remember back, we there was a... Uh, my brother-in-law's father had passed away, so we yes. had we had two families staying with us, and each one of the kids seemed to be having something. And you know, I don't blame anybody for it; it just it happens, you mm-hmm. know. But I was around different kinds of of bugs, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I, you know, I think teaching my classes Wednesday nights that start at nine thirty that probably didn't help. Yeah. So you get run down, and you're exposed to it, and not even airborne gummies can mm-hmm. protect you. So. Well, luckily, spring has sprung, or at least according yes. to the calendar. <laughs> at least according to the calendar. So we are inching closer to some more sunshine and uh, some yeah healthier days ahead. Uh, you know, I was it was interesting the last week or so when I found myself, you know, laying in bed for for a couple of days, and I was watching bass fishing tournaments on my iPad, and I'm thinking. I would just love to go fishing. <laughs> soon. Pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon we're going to be able to. Yeah. But So we're not talking about bass fishing. We're not talking about my illness. But um, in my post that came out this morning, the title is Don't Leave Go. And, and I know that that's kind of a it's, – it's, it's very confusing. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I was feeling sorry for myself the morning that I wrote this, I was listening to a podcast with, where one of my mentors really said, you know, don't leave something, go to something else. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a great example that, that actually I had heard from my mentor many, many years ago about a baseball manager. And this manager, you know, everybody knows that it, toward the later innings of a baseball game, pitchers begin to get tired and the manager goes out and he replaces the pitcher. with He calls, goes to the bullpen to bring in another pitcher. And this manager was asked one time about going out and pulling a pitcher. And he said, I didn't go out and pull the pitcher. I went out and I brought in another pitcher, Mm -hmm. someone who might be better suited for the batters that are coming up. And I, and it really, there's that, this beautiful subtlety in that where it's, it's not replacing somebody, it's going to something else Mm -hmm. and bringing in somebody new. And I see that as a very, a very positive thing. And so as I was, as I was focusing on, you know, okay, where am I? Why am I now three weeks into this? can't seem to shake it, starting to feel sorry for myself. Just this reminder of, David, don't try to leave being sick. Go to something better. Mm-hmm. Engage yourself in things that are more positive. And over time, those, those positive experiences will override the negative ones. And so that's mm-hmm. kind of what I was doing when I, when I was writing this. And it, it really did start to change my mindset again. So I think this is, again, we've, we've had a pattern over the last several months of, you know, choosing your thought life, choosing your attitudes. But, but I think too often we, we're stuck in a scenario and we just want the scenario to change. We want to just be able to leave our circumstances, but we really should decide where do we want to go and, and, and what positive thing can we build in, mm-hmm. which really does take us to a better place. And I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but it, it kind of made sense to me. Mm-hmm. What, what were your thoughts when you first read that post? So I'm still sort of wrapping my head around it. It makes sense. Yep. And I think the baseball example is very good. But I've been trying to make sense of it in other situations. And sure. I don't think I'm quite there yet, but I think it, it's brought to mind a couple other different things. 
okay. for me. Um, one being like saying no and saying yes. So when you're saying, mm. you know, no, you you have to sometimes have to say no to good things to make room for great things. Or yes. you know, when you're saying yes to some one thing, you're saying no to something else. Um, so right. that came to mind uh, for sure because I feel like okay. they're in, they're they run parallel to each other. Sure. Um, and then the other thing that came to mind was just kind of this idea of, um, you know, sometimes we want to make quick decisions based on circumstances, Mm, you know, like you're having a really bad day and you, you feel like, you know, this is, you know, I'm having the worst day ever. I'm just going to quit my job. And, and that's really not. A good idea, right? You shouldn't yes. quit on a bad day or um, right. make any kind of split decision based on those emotions or feelings, um, but rather maybe use that as some, to catapult you into something better. Like, okay, why am I having this bad day? Um, what went wrong? How can I change it? Sure. And, you know, and make it better. Sure. So here's an example, and I and I like I like the um, I, I like the example you talked about, like you're having a bad day, you want to quit your job, kind of thing. So, you know, are we ever like think about that in terms of a job? When are we ever leaving a job, or are we going to a different job, mm-hmm. or following a different going, opportunity, or fo- exactly yeah. following a different opportunity? So leaving a place to work that you work at because you're unhappy mm-hmm. is never the answer. Mm-hmm. But going to something that could be more fulfilling, that could be a better opportunity for you. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, that's, I guess that's another like, example of this. Don't leave. Go. Mm-hmm. Go to something better. Um, you know, when we're uh, – I can think of some parenting things. So I was just going to bring that up too. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to use an example first? No, you go first. Okay. So I'm thinking back many, many years ago when our kids were little. Um, we had some friends of ours and they had kids the same age as our kids. And, and, you know, it got to be time for Halloween. And so, okay, so, you know, what do we do for our kids? Do we, do we go to some Halloween party? Do we, you know, and because, and we were, we were somewhat concerned about, you know, we don't want to celebrate the occult. We don't, you know, we, you know, but we want, we want our kids to be able to really enjoy, mm-hmm you know, some time. And, and so we would let our, our kids always participate in like the Halloween parades and things at, at school. But we started wondering as, as some church families, what could we do? So we decided to have a harvest party. Hmm. You know, so rather than saying, no, you can't go do this. We said, hey, let's do this instead. Right. You know, um, I, I can think too is, is you know, times when, when I was growing up, and and my parents, what for whatever reason, money was tight. One of the you know one of the best Christmas presents that I can remember we ever got was there wasn't a lot of money, and I didn't know that because I was young, I was too young to, to to sense what was going on. But but my parents had just moved to Syracuse, and and my dad, you know, rather than saying okay, we can't, we don't have money for things, he built a scroll saw out of parts that he found at the factory where he worked. Mm-hmm. So again, it's not, you know, not staying where you are whining and complaining, but it's going to something better. Right. And, and I still have that scroll saw. I don't use it because, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's really loud and it's pretty, I think it's pretty dangerous. But anyways, mm-hmm. it's still sitting on a shelf in my, in my storage room here because that's mm-hmm. something my dad made for me. Mm-hmm. It, well, I actually made it for my brother and I was just, you know, along for the ride so to speak because <laughs> I was much younger. But that's the kind of thing. You know, are we saying no to everything or are we finding a way to get to yes? Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's the difference in leaving versus going to something. Mm-hmm. Well, and, I, and I'm thinking about like really leaning into the situation. So, mm-hmm. is, you know, I think about traveling. Yes. It's one thing when it's just you and you can control a lot more. When you travel with your family or travel with kids, um, it throws everyone for a loop and I feel like you can either like fight against it and right. make it worse probably, or you can just kind of like lean into the situation, look for the good in it and exactly, and and go from there like one step at a time. Ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. And that really is the, the, 
the 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 the, the core piece of mm-hmm. this you know, don't leave something, go to something better. Mm-hmm. You know, so many times, oh, I can think back of one of my, one of my most frustrating parenting trips. And we took a lot of trips because my in-laws and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles all lived in Ohio. So, you know, we were driving, I, I have made more trips between Syracuse and Mansfield, Ohio than I can count. Um, but I remember once, and we had a fairly new car. It probably was the only, actually it was the first new car that my wife and I had ever bought. Mm -hmm. And so we we had our three kids and I was telling telling you about the car before (laughs) we started recording. And we had stopped, we were on our way home and we had stopped at at one of the service areas to get, to go to the bathroom or something. and And I got a cup of coffee and I set the coffee on, there was a holder on top of the dashboard. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're getting in the car and the kids are just out of control or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in my frustration, I just accelerate real hard to get out onto the interstate and the cup of coffee flips and I grab it as the coffee runs down the dashboard into the center console over the shift lever. You know, it was just like... Mm. So it's a car that I probably was taking too good a care of because I have a habit of obsessing about my vehicles Mm -hmm. and how clean they need to be. But it was just like, that's what happens when you don't go with the positives of the moment. Mm -hmm. And you allow yourself to get so wound up that you're just fighting all the negatives. All I wanted Mm -hmm. to do was leave the service area and get home quick Mm -hmm. rather than saying, what could we do that's, you know, could we sing songs with the kids? Could we tell stories to the kids. Mm-hmm. No, nope, I was just this stressed out dad. And mm-hmm. I ended up with coffee in my radio and my CD player and my all down my arm. And So I also think that there's a way to apply this to our thought life. Okay, good. And, you know, when you think about, you know, don't leave, go, sometimes you, you can't leave. So right. You could be in a really stressful meeting or Mm, just maybe even just having like a really tough day, a really tough week. And sometimes you get that feeling like you can't, you can't dig out or you can't escape. Right. So maybe it's not that you, you don't want to leave, you you feel like you can't leave. And it's at those times where I think you need to like go into a more meditative state, a, a, a positive sure. place where, you know, like take those, take 10 minutes to, we've talked about like the Calm app or I think yes. there's one called Headspace or something like that and, and yep. go there to Perfect. have some kind of break from whatever's going on. And oftentimes I think you'll come back more refreshed and you maybe don't feel like you have to leave anymore. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, you, could, you know, but I feel like that's you know another application that has come to my mind is taking control of of your thoughts in that way. That's that's a great one. You know, I, actually, I had a coaching client this week ask me, you know, because what when, with my clients they fill out a session prep form before mm-hmm. they come in, and they and then they send that to me uh, ahead of time. And and what he he had a question about meditation mm. because he he really didn't know what it was. And he kind of wondered what my thoughts were on it, right? You know, and and I and it was we had a great conversation, and and I had actually used an example, and I think I wrote about it, but I don't think we were doing our podcast then. But where I really wanted to be very mindful mm-hmm. about Black Friday, so it was like a Black Friday, and our family was going to go to the mall because my daughter had come with her kids from Ohio for. Thanksgiving. And so we were all going to go to the mall. And that is typically a time that would stress me out to the max. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to really be fully present, be very mindful and enjoy the day. And even in that chaos, which I think fits into this don't leave but go, I went to a place mentally where I was trying to be really mindful of all the, the situation around me. And all of a sudden, instead of seeing the chaos, I heard the Christmas music. Mm -hmm. I saw the children's smiles in the Disney store. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was almost like this meditative state. It was a mindfulness state. Right. In the middle of the chaos that really made it enjoyable. Yeah. 
you know, and maybe that too can, can help our listeners when you're, let's say you're in that meeting and the meeting is difficult and you can't just get up and leave the meeting, you know, but can you allow your mind to go to a more positive mindset, Mm -hmm. you know, about, okay, what, you know, what is, rather than just identifying, you know, you can use the journaling piece that we talked about last Mm -hmm. week. Sometimes just writing down that thought, that feeling will allow you to process that away and go to a better place. Right. Emotionally than just stressing about it. And we've talked about like the five minute vacation or however many minute vacation. Um, You know, I always joke that Starbucks is my five minute vacation. (laughs) Sure. Um, But you I mean, it can be anything. And even in those situations, like sometimes if I know I'm going in to something like a stressful meeting or a difficult conversation. Um, I, like I do really enjoy hot coffee. Um, yep. I will like bring it into the meeting and just like sip it and relax. And like, this is, even though like I'm in this stressful, difficult conversation, like this is my five minute vacation. Yeah. Or, Or like you can like take, you know, take a pause or, and just like sip your coffee or your water or what, you know, whatever yep. Yep. it might be. Or t- instead of writing your notes really fast in the meeting, like taking your time to slowly right. record what, what you need to do or um, yep. trace something. I mean, it just there's, I think, some t- some other tools that aren't directly like sitting quietly and meditating for 10 minutes that can right. have a similar effect. Right. You know, we probably would get in trouble in a meeting if we just sat back and closed our eyes and started some breathing exercises. You know, people may wonder Mm -hmm. what in the world just happened. Mm -hmm. But the, the, you know, the the journaling piece, writing down Mm -hmm. what I'm feeling, like you said, sipping the coffee. Mm -hmm. As you were saying that, I'm thinking, yeah, that would be really nice right now. It's a nice, strong cup of Uh Cafe Verona, Mm because that's my favorite coffee. (laughs) Um, But, and so as I'm, as I'm looking at my my email post that, that went out this morning, I, I, what I'm seeing as I look at this, don't leave go, it's take responsibility and don't surrender as a victim. Yes, that's surrender is because the perfect when, word to use. Yeah, when we leave, we're surrendering to the situation. Mm-hmm. Don't. Mm-hmm. Choose, be, be proactive and go to something that is a better situation mm-hmm. and it's always going to have to start mentally before it and it, it can go anywhere else. Yeah. You know, and you can, you can create those better scenarios right where you are. If you take your thought life back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm, I think I'm starting to get it now that we've talked Good. it through. <laughs> so it only took us about 18, 15, minutes. 18 minutes to figure <laughs> this one out. Yeah. But you know, I, yeah. And I'm and I'm still learning it, mm-hmm. you know, and and I and I'm hoping for our listeners that you know they realize that when they listen to our podcast, you and I are just two friends talking about what we're trying to figure out, right? And what we're trying to learn, and you know, I'm not an expert, you know, um, by any means. Mm-hmm. But if and, you know, I would encourage people have conversations with people about this. Yeah, you know, send us an email that says, "Hey, I didn't understand this. What else could you point us to on this one?" Mm-hmm. And, you know, is there a book that you could, would, would recommend people read? Actually, I'm, I'm reading an amazing book right now that I'll share. It has nothing to do with our podcast. Well, actually, it probably does because, because I think this was a person that mastered this. So the book is actually called 41, and it was written by George W. Bush about his dad. Mm. And it's basically a biography of his dad's life from the son's perspective. Interesting. And and what I love about it is that the George H.W. Bush that I remember as president mm-hmm. was not the real man. I think he was a good president. Um, you know, I had I voted for him, I supported him. But the man that we didn't see was an amazing man that, that you know, loved family, knew how to rebound from he he didn't leave things. He went to things. Mm-hmm. And he was always looking for a better outcome that he could have influence on. You know, from, from you know, being shot down in the South Pacific during World War II, you know, finding ways that he could connect with the crew members that died in the plane crashes. You know, like, 
he had crew members that died and he was the pilot mm -hmm. and he reached out to their families to try to make it a better scenario type of thing so you know those kind of things if you find something if you a book share it with people mm -hmm. you know share the stories with people because that helps people go to a better place how's that that's great and my voice is just about gone. Yeah. So that's how we know we're getting I, to the end here. <laughs> that's how we know we're getting to the end because Dave's losing his voice. So anything exciting happening in your family in the upcoming future? Um, pretty soon we're going to have some guests from out of town. My mother and father in law are coming, so we're preparing for that. Good. I'm really excited to see them. And believe it or not, Good. I feel like we have some some kind of family engagement every weekend now through Mother's Day, I want wow. to say. Like I, wow. I, I was going through my calendar today with my mom, and I said I'm basically booked till Fourth of July. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> Already. Well, we in. know by Mother's Day the weather will be amazing. Yes, I, just last Mother's Day was so perfect. I hope we get the same weather this yeah. year. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. How about you? Yeah. So, well, uh, there's a very good chance my daughter's coming with her kids tomorrow but at five o'clock today she has to call the um department of jurors or whatever in ohio and find out if uh, she's on jury duty next week she has to call in today at five so uh, anyways <laughs> yeah so hopefully she'll be able to come she's all excited about it Aww. and we are as well and and actually my wife and i too are going to have three couples over for dinner this evening so i'm smelling Great. this amazing food that my wife's making it's it's all good we're awesome we're just, we're going to better things all the time. Good. And I have no idea what I'm going to write about next week. All right. It'll be so, a surprise. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> so we want to remind people, please subscribe. You know, please leave reviews. Uh, and if you have questions that you'd like us to answer, please send them in. Yeah. With that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. This was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.